Hello and welcome back to another video. We're doing another vintage watch. Today it's the Orient Surfer. Let's get into it. This watch was quite worn as the usual vintage watches we do are. That crystal is pretty scuffed. That second hand you can see is pink. It should be red. It means that paint has faded off. Yeah, the case is worn up, that's for sure. Clasp is worn. For some reason, a AAA insignia. Case back is worn. But we're going to clean all that up. A very small movement for a man's watch. This is more like a lady's cocktail watch, but it has 25 jewels, which is very uncommon. Very uncommon. It must have just capped all of those train jewels and a jeweled mainspring. Let's remove the bezel and crystal. Remove a turnable chapter ring. Which isn't the best design for a diver watch, but that's okay. Loosen up the set lever screw to release the stem. Movement ring. Definitely needed a movement ring, a big one, to keep that small movement inside that case. But it's pretty. I, I love this like pinstripe finish on it. Move the hands. Loosen up the dial screws. Pop off that dial. Orient Surfing, 40 meter diver. Waterproof, can't say that anymore. <laughs> 25 Joule. And let's begin taking apart the date wheel and date mechanism. First we have the date wheel cover. Of course that goes. Move that date wheel, and you saw that jumper move forward. Next we're going to remove the date jumper and date jumper spring. Dial washer. And this plate covers the setting mechanism, keeps everything held down, and allows for that date wheel to ride on something. Now the date, or the setting mechanism is exposed. We're going to begin removing the set lever bridge, setting bridge. This bridge actually actuates with the set lever. It has that arm that sticks out so it can click back and forth from different positions, winding, setting. Set lever spring, clutch, le clutch lever spring, clutch lever, minute wheel, intermediate wheel, And we'll go for that, the train bridge cap jewels. That, that bridge up there that has Orient and 25 Jewel marked on it. I'll take that sweep seconds pinion out of there. Remove the crown wheel screw, which is a usually a left-handed screw in this one it is. Ratchet wheel screw. That's a spring that holds the sweep second pinion up so that it doesn't bind on that train bridge. This is the barrel bridge screws.
mainspring barrel, fourth wheel, I'm sorry, third wheel, then fourth wheel, cannon pinion, center wheel, and remove the balance. And that third wheel is the one that connects to the sweep second pinion, so you have center seconds. Pallet fork bridge. Pallet fork and escape wheel. Oh, and the set lever screw, which goes through the plate to the dial side and connects to the set lever. Now we're just gonna put all the parts in the cleaning baskets. Remove the mainspring from the mainspring barrel. That cover literally just presses inside that mainspring barrel. That's all that holds it on there. You just press down, the arbor pushes against the cover, pops open. Mainspring's in pretty good condition, I think. Oh no, we had to replace it actually. Parts in the cleaning basket. I will go first solutions an ammoniated waterless cleaning solution. Now, while we do that, we're just going to clean up those lugs on the case. Some pretty big dents. That edge should be sharp. So, we're just going to clean up those dents and cuts. And needed a little bit, a little bit extra than just the wheel, so we used a file to start off a real rough cut, and then go to the wheel to finish it up. Next is first bath, second bath, and third bath, which is a silicon-based waterless solution, and then fourth is a dry. Each cup is about four to five minutes. Total's about 20 minutes. The main thing popped out of there. <laughs> While that dries, we're gonna look at the case and band. And that is a very worn clasp. Bezel's all right. Needs to be cleaned up. Crystal should probably be replaced. So first we're gonna try this buffing, this brushed buffing wheel that gives it a brush finish. But I soon find out that this thing is way worn and needs a defi definitely a harder cut. So we'll go to this wheel, which is a, a rougher wheel. And I find that can do the case and band but it can't do the clasp. And so then I move on to this wire wheel, which is very, very tough. And so we're just trying to cut away all those nicks and scratches. And then we go back to the, the little bit softer brush wheel to finish it up. And we're gonna do a polish finish for the bezel. We got a brush for the case and band and a polish for the bezel. This is a Gem Oro Pro solution, which is just a jewelry cleaner, ultrasonic jewelry cleaner. And again, just di dish soap to clean out the case of van, get all that grit that has been broken up from the ultrasonic and just wash that all away. And scrub off any of the thick residue that's left. We're going to hand dry before we air dry. Get the brunt of it away. Hand dried.
drying cycle is done. The case band cleaned up very nicely. The crystal should be replaced. Bezel looks good. Case and band still has a little bit of wear to it, but it's a vintage watch. We want to keep that look. And we're on to oiling. Now disassembling this watch, it was easy to use the camera. Reassembling this watch, it was quite a bit hard. And so I reassembled the watch under the microscope camera. A lot easier just to get the fine oiling and tuning of the watch correct. And so we use 9010 for the train, D5 for the center wheel. We got a brand new mainspring, a white alloy, some D5 for the mainspring barrel where the arbor sits, some Mobius 8000 for the mainspring coils. Install that arbor. Install the mainspring barrel cap. Disclaimer here. Two teeth of the mainspring barrel were broke off. And so currently I have this watch right here. Does not run. I searched eBay, could not find a mainspring barrel for the life of me. So until one shows up, we have a restored watch with a bad mainspring barrel. It'll run until it meets those two teeth and it stops. But here we're installing the train, oiling the upper train bridge hole jewels and cap jewels. We'll install this train bridge which goes over the escape wheel, fourth wheel, and center wheel and squeaks in between that third wheel because that third wheel, the bottom part is part of the train, and the top part goes to the sweep seconds pinion, which goes through the center wheel right there. So we're just going to oil the top part of there. There's the sweep seconds pinion spring. Keeps that sweep seconds pinion up so it doesn't bind on that bridge. Install the sweep, center sweep seconds pinion. And install the top bridge. This watch was so small that I, I had to install it with the microscope camera, under the microscope. Everything seems to be free. Add a little D5 to the main to the set lever screw. Install the jeweled barrel bridge. Put some D5 on that jewel. A little Mobius on the crown wheel. That little spacer that I just installed there is what allows the, the crown wheel to ride on it and what the screw screws down tight on top of so that the screw does not bind with the wheel. Left-handed threads, and the ratchet wheel. While screwing down, it wound up a little bit. You can see there's backlash in the train. It's a good sign that everything is clear and free, oiled, so that when the power winds down, there's a little bit of wind up at the end of the wind down, so then there's backlash. We'll put a bit of oil on the pallet fork stones, the impulse stones, 
install the pallet bridge. Check to make sure the pallet fork isn't binding and install that balance. So put some oil on the center wheel post for the cannon pinion and the setting a date mechanism. There's the intermediate wheel. Here's the winding pinion, the clutch wheel. I like to put some oil in between the two wheels so that when you wind backwards, it's free. This is the clutch lever. I'm sorry, this is the set lever. Put down the cannon pinion. Minute wheel. G12, that's what I've looked up for the model of the watch and I just can't find it. Here's the hour wheel. Install that set lever inside the clutch. Sorry, the clutch lever inside the clutch. Clutch lever bridge. There's that plate that goes over the whole mechanism, the setting mechanism, the date mechanism. Dial washer. There's the date jumper. Here's the date advancement wheel. Here's the spring that when the when that date advancement wheel goes around, it clicks, and so it's a nice sharp advancement of the date rather than a slow turning, it's a sharp advancement. And we'll install the jumper spring, date jumper spring. And here's the date wheel cover. Two miniature screws to hold that down. Put a little oil on the stem. Make sure that date advances. This is the hour hand, now the minute hand. That seconds hand faded. Now this is a chapter ring for a diver watch and the reason why you have the chapter ring instead of a bezel is so that you know you can time yourself for how much basically how much air you have left. But I don't like it because that crown can move and now you don't know what time it is. But right now we're going to find a new acrylic crystal to replace it with and it's a PA469 and this type of acrylic crystal fits over this lip on the case and then the bezel goes over that and squeezes it all together so that you have a watertight fit.
just like that, and then the bezel goes over top. Oh, I'm going to lubricate the gasket for the back gasket. And so then that bezel just presses over that acrylic crystal, pushing the plastic into the metal, and it's a, it's a watertight fit. And I think this watch turned out really well. Aside from not having a mainspring barrel with proper teeth so that it'll run all the time, that's another for another day, but it turned out really well. There you can see that chapter ring that is oscillating around with that top crown, crown at two. And the crown at fours for winding, but I think it turned out really well. Try to keep a little bit of the wear to show the age of the watch. But thank you guys very much for joining me with another watch. This is our second diver watch we've done on the channel. I really enjoy everything that you guys have done for me with all the likes and comments and whatnot and subs, and I just truly really appreciate it. And I, I just can't wait to keep doing more watches and showing you just what I do from a day to day. So thank you very much, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Have a wonderful day. Bye.